the reef, a heady and colourful mix of life. Countless small creatures known as coral polyps coexist in colonies. Corals might have survived for 400 million years, but in reality, they are extremely delicate. They prefer light and water in moderation. So when the meteorite struck, they must have experienced a terrible blow. Waves crashing on the shore shook up the warm, shallow waters that corals enjoy thoroughly. The temperature of the water plummeted. This was followed by months of gloom. The inadequate sunlight would have resulted in the death of small plants known as algae, which live inside coral and nourish it. Because, even in water, plants require the light of the sun for development. With the absence of algae, the coral becomes bleached, resulting in a ghost-like barren white land. So how on earth did they recolonize to develop into the stunning tropical gardens we see today? Well, did you know that only one coral larvae settling in a conducive place can lead to an entire new reef? The larvae transforms into a polyp after a few days. It has a delicate body with a mouth on top, surrounded by stinging tentacles. Duplicate polyps thrust out, each enclosing themselves with a tough limestone skeleton. Slowly, a colony begins to develop. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. Just imagine how, in more than 10,000 years, layers upon layers of millions and millions of these creatures have given rise to the Great Barrier Reef. The reef, like a metropolis, is bustling with activity throughout the night. It is the corals' feeding time, as there are less fish around to chew on their tentacles. They come out of their rocky abodes to capture passing animal plankton. With unique stinging cells to paralyze them, their tentacles put the delicious meal in their mouth. Corals might appear like pieces of rock, but don't let that mislead you. They might have overcome the meteorite collision because they fought for it and did not give up. The jam-packed reefs are actually battlegrounds for space. Chemicals released in the water alert them when a neighbor gets too close for comfort. So war commences. The polyps fight fiercely and just take in their enemies alive. But on a particular summer night, after the full moon, fighting is the last thing the corals have on their minds. It's time to breed and produce the offspring that will help form new reefs in the future. Tiny bundles of cells are discharged to float to the surface gracefully. Here, eggs and sperm from various colonies have an opportunity to meet and if the union is suitable, then fertilization occurs. By discharging huge numbers of eggs, corals do their best to safeguard their lineage. So, should another meteorite strike Earth, only one larvae, all set to act, would be enough to prove the incredible survival instincts of the corals.
65 million years ago, after a meteorite collided with the Earth, silence reigned in the forests. But in the bushes and scrubs, there was a commotion. Tiny, hairy, warm-blooded animals resembling this shrew today were busy preying on insects. And without any dinosaurs around, these prehistoric mammals no longer had to hide in the day. They could roam freely and eat as they wished. Today's modern mammals have descended from them, large and tiny, and they have taken over the planet. So how did this happen? Well, post the meteorite collision, dust and soot obstructed the sun rays, and this led to a decrease in the Earth's temperature. But mammals possess a unique feature to deal with this, fur. Only mammals possess it, including human beings. Fur provides amazing insulation and has enabled mammals to survive in some of the world's coldest places. This Arctic fox has got a thick fur coat which helps to shut out the chilly air and rain. But along with fur, mammals have their own internal central heating, which protects them against the cold, warm blood. This means that these seals maintain a constant body temperature, which is slightly higher than the outside temperature. So, along with fur, they can remain active in the freezing water. Warm-blooded mammals endured the big freeze, whereas the cold-blooded dinosaurs, incapable of keeping themselves warm, perished. Now, with only few attackers to be frightened of, mammals quickly multiplied, creating an incredible range of shapes and sizes. there was another factor that helped them in adjusting to a changing world. They were intelligent. With respect to the size of their body, mammals have the biggest brains, and they have developed into the most intelligent creatures on Earth. But the brain requires data to process, somewhat like computers today. So parents, like these chimpanzees, work ardently to train their kids. This mother looks after and cares for her young, feeding it in a manner that is distinct to mammals, with milk from special mammary glands located on her body. The milk is a wholesome food, offering all the nutrients her offspring requires for a healthy growth. Playing also helps in developing the brain. Through play, mammals increase their skill to understand and tackle problems. It also builds their muscles and helps to organize themselves better, skills which can be a matter of life and death. The death of the dinosaurs in the meteorite crash marked the advent of the age of mammals. And we owe our existence today to the prehistoric shrew-like creatures that survived those dark times. And though we are only one of roughly 4,000 mammal species, humans have grown to be the most clever and numerous of all large creatures. Now, it is our influence on the world that will shape not just our own future, but also that of every other creature dwelling on Earth.